Hello everybody, uh, my name is Idle Wave, and I'm coming at you with a progression series idea. Um, this is no intent to be a video series at all, it's just kind of like a rule set that I kind of come up, came up with uh, off the top of my head. It's going to be completely unscripted, but I have the pictures in front of me to kind of guide me along the way. Um, so I was feeling a little nostalgic for Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns and the concept of Storm Access and how a little bit of randomization, right, RNG can be very, very huge in terms of like fun, right? You, you, you're you playing like a game with a, with your buddies, right? And you're, you want to add a little bit of RNG, a little bit of variance to it in a way that you're, you're having fun, right? So I came up with this kind of rule set, the storm access progression. So right off the bat, um, the sets that you're going to pull uh, in the beginning to start off your collection is one dark beginning, one and two, one dark revelation one and two and one dark legends as well as a copy of the tuner monsters magical hound red resonator and junk synchron and three copies of polymerization so this is going to give you your little kind of toolbox at the beginning um i'm kind of tired <laughs> of of doing uh starting things off at legend of blue eyes it's not that fun right so we're gonna skip that uh, DM era, but there will be ways to kind of access DM tools with this kind of catalog and things in the future. Um, so you are going to be pulling 10 packs of the Lost Millennium. This is half of what progression series usually do. I am a huge proponent at having the amount of cards you pull per set because it lowers the consistency of decks by a large margin and puts a lot more emphasis on commons. Um, you are going to not be able to create as many constructed decks as you normally would, and thus it kind of replicates the playground feel a little bit more. Um, it tests your deck building a little bit more. You have to be kind of aware of what is, is going to be coming at you. So you're going to be pulling 10 uh, of the Lost Millennium, and you'll have the packs from before, and that kind of rounds out your, your early game. From there, you'll pull like everything else in order if you'd like, or you can even go out of order. But in, in the sake of in order, right, after this would be a Cybernetic Revolution, and you'd pull 10 of that. So what is the Storm Axis progression? So you're going to have a blank card, and this blank card, you're going to have to add it to your main deck uh, every single duel you do, so you're going to have that card in your deck. That card, at the start of the duel, both players banish that copy of the blank card from their deck. And it'll come up when you storm access. So, what are the storm access conditions? Uh, when your life points are 2,000 or less during your turn, uh, it's going to be mandatory. Okay? So, if you get hit by like a direct attack, right, and then you're at like 1,500 life points, um, you're going to, on your turn, as soon as your turn starts, it's, it's, you can use Storm Access. Um, this is mandatory, uh, like I said, so you can kind of play around it in a way. If you don't think your opponent can benefit from it, you can kind of attack around it. Or you can kind of avoid the Storm Access, right? Just like in the anime, people have kind of avoided uh, putting their opponent at that much life points. Um, the reason why it's 2,000 instead of 1,000 is I just doubled the number from the anime. Um, 2,000 is a more realistic number to be at. So number two is you may storm access before your draw or during either player's main phase. Um, or sorry, during either main phase, sorry. Not either player's, during your own main phase. So um, the reason why you can speci specify before your draw is for the second part of this mechanic that I'll explain later, but just keep that in mind. Um, at any point in your turn, basically, except like in the battle phase, it doesn't really matter, but like uh, during your turn, you can just say, I'm going to storm access. Uh, three, the storm access lasts until the end of the turn. So if you do not storm access anything, um, once you are mandatorily put into storm access during your turn, um, you do not get the storm access anymore for the rest of the uh, duel. Right, so if you say get hit by, if you get hit and you're at like 1400 life points um, and your turn rolls around and you choose not to use storm access, then you're not going to be able to storm access for, the, for that duel because you're already out of it. Um, in addition to this, uh, if you were to lower your life points during your turn, 
below 2,000. So if you're like, if you pay like confiscation, right, and you you get down to like 900 life points, or I guess like confiscation would be like uh, if you went from 2,500 to like 15, um, you would have to storm access that turn. Otherwise, you'd lose it. And then lastly, uh, you may only storm access once per match. Um, this is why, uh, for this reason, you can't uh, farm storm accesses, right? You can't just be like, I'm gonna lower my life points to this amount every duel, so that way I can get more monsters than my opponent. Now, there are two different types of storm accesses. There are extra deck storm accesses and main deck storm accesses. They're both, you, they both occupy that one storm access per match slot. So the extra deck storm access, uh, during your main phase, the blank card becomes any extra deck monster in the game. Okay, so um, if you have those two level fours out, you can uh, storm access into a rank four. Or maybe you can go into a link two monster, right? Or if you have one of the aforementioned tuners, maybe you can look at a synchro that you want to do. Maybe you have Polly in your hand and an elemental hero. And say you have like a wind monster, you can go for like the great tornado. It's a very versatile mechanic. However, there are some restrictions to this. When Xyz or Link summoning, you must meet three, uh, sorry, you must meet two of the following criteria between the materials. It says three on the screen. I apologize. It's supposed to say two. Um, so you must meet the same attribute, same type, or same archetype. Okay, so two of the three of those conditions are going to be met. So let's look at each of the monsters, okay? So if you have Lejin and Winged Dragon, Guardian of the Fortress, you can make Dark Rebellion and Xyz Dragon. This is because Lejin's a dark monster, Winged Dragon's a dragon monster, Dark Rebellion is a dark dragon monster. If you have Sparkman and Neo Aquamador, you can make Utopia. This is because Sparkman is a light and a warrior monster, even though Aquamador is neither of those things. If you have Gagaga Magician and Prevent Rat, you could make Gagaga Cowboy, because Gagaga Magician is a Gagaga monster and Prevent Rat is an earth monster. And if you had Giant Soldier of Stone and Breaker the Magical Warrior, you could make Asa Immovable, because Giant Soldier of Stone is earth and Breaker is Spellcaster. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Uh, the reason why we're doing it like this is because I don't want to open the floodgates to every single extra deck monster available because that would make things kind of broken in my opinion. Um, this would kind of, if you want to farm for like the, for a specific extra deck monster, you're going to have to tailor your deck around that extra deck monster. It makes more sense thematically too. Uh, so if you're using synchro monsters, right? The Synchro Monster must be the same type as one of the non-tuners. So I have two examples right here. Uh, you have Decoy Dragon, Bersinatrix, and Junk Synchron. You can make a Synchro 8, which could either be, in this case, Stardust Dragon, because Decoy Dragon's a dragon monster, or Colossal Fighter, because Bersinatrix is a warrior monster. If you are storm accessing a fusion monster, it's unrestricted. Uh, you have Polly in your hand, have fun, okay? You just, it, you can make anything you want with Polly. Now, there's the main deck storm access as well. You may replace your draw for turn with the blank card. So before you draw, because uh, you're going to be playing on Dueling Book, just um, before you start your turn, disable the auto draw. And if you want to do a main deck storm access, then say uh, storm access. Then you will add the blank card to your hand from the banished zone, and that's going to be the, the card that you draw for turn. So uh, the blank card is um, can get you out of the situation, right? The blank card becomes any main deck monster that would help you in that scenario. So I have this little example right here of Caius and Blue Eyes White Dragon. As you can see, an extra deck... Uh, Storm Axis isn't going to help me here, right? Like, I have zero monsters on my field. I, I can't do anything with an extra deck right now. However, if I, say, declared Storm Axis and made the blank monster a Terra Top, I could special summon it because I control no monsters and then tribute over it for Caius, and then Caius could out the blue eyes. That's an example of a main deck Storm Axis. 
Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier uh, with the extra deck storm access, but the card that is banished, the blank card that becomes the extra deck monster, any card that you're storm accessing into is going to be the, the blank card, right? That's going to be, you're just going to add that to your extra deck or add that to your hand if it's a main deck monster or place it onto the field as if you were summoning it if it is an extra deck monster. Um, so once you do that extra deck mechanic or the storm access mechanic, uh, for the rest of the set, for the rest of the match, that card is going to be that card. So um, if you chose Stardust Dragon, next uh, game it's going to be Stardust Dragon. The next game after that's going to be Stardust Dragon. Uh, if you chose Terror Top, then the card in the deck is no longer going to be banished. Um, it's going to be uh, remain in your deck because it's a Terror Top in your deck. Now, after the match, uh, there's a couple procedures, a couple catch-up mechanics. So, players keep their storm accessed monster. So, in this case, you know, the Stardust Dragon. You've made the Stardust Dragon nice, you get to keep the Stardust Dragon. Um, the winner gets one random pack from sets already pulled. So, you'll pull up a list of, like, Dark Beginning, Dark Revelation, Dark Legends, the Lost Millennium, and any subsequent things after that and then you randomize which one of those you get to get an extra pull from. So you get some, some cards that way. Um, that way you can be able to farm some DM cards, you can be able to maybe round up your, your pulls a little bit better. It can be good. The loser, as well as any player that did not successfully storm access, picks one archetypal monster in their collection and adds one main deck archetypal support card to their collection. So uh, I have this example at the bottom say i lost or i didn't get to storm access i can be like okay i have an ancient gear soldier in my collection i want to add ancient gear reborn right or i can add ancient gear wyvern because that's an ancient gear card those are ancient gear support cards and then finally uh if you lose two consecutive times you get to ban a card uh, it's standard catch-up mechanic procedure um, you can kind of hit problematic cards that way um, so people don't really snowball. But yeah, that's the uh, the Storm Access progression series idea that I had. Um, I have many progression series ideas, but this is one that um, was, was off the top of my head right now. Uh, if you guys want to see some content, whether it be from this or maybe other progression series ideas, right, I can make a kind of like a cool little like list playlist of like, oh, you know, if you're bored, maybe check out this rule set kind of thing. So um, again, everybody, thank you for, for watching and I hope you have a good one.